Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Lee. And I want to begin by thanking PPMD for giving this, op this op opportunity to us to share with you our story for your boys and also congratulate PPMD on the, frankly, the landmark FDA guidance. It's uh, qu quite a step forward for, for the industry and for patients. The, uh, so Dr. Binks has been here for two years. He's a grizzled veteran compared to me. This is my first year here. Uh, I've only been uh, in this space of DMD for about seven months now with IDERA. However, I do uh, come from a world of rare diseases, and I find some similarities between uh, this patient group and the prior patients, patient groups in which I've been exposed. And let me begin by saying thank you to you, uh, because frankly, the inspiration for companies like ours comes from you and from your boys. And uh, it's very easy to get up and go to work every day when you know what you're trying to do is to make a difference for, for you and your, your boys. And I think that's true of all my colleagues at IDERA. So, so thank you for giving us that inspiration every day. Uh, like the other companies, we also are a publicly traded company. And uh, I did notice that there were a couple of Wall Street analysts at this conference, so I, I better point out the safe harbor statement. I encourage you to read our uh, SEC documents. They're especially good if you have insomnia, but they also talk lots about the risks that are uh, in our business, and I'm sure you've li you're living with many of the risks that are in our business, but they're reflected in our documents. So as Dr. Sweeney said, we, we are the first of two uh, companies going to talk about a different approach. And uh, another analogy I can draw from my prior experience in rare disease, frankly, is that uh, there is not one solution for all patients with any of these rare diseases. And frankly, every patient with any rare disease deserves to have a solution. And so uh, although IDERA is relatively new in the space, uh, we, come, we come to it with energy and passion and hope that we can contribute to a positive outcome for, for your kids. Uh, I, am the, I think I'm the lone non-MD PhD in the crowd, so if my slides look a little simple, that's because they are intended to go with the speaker. So I hope that uh, they don't offend you. So what is, let's, let's start with what is a toll-like receptor. So the, the acronym is TLR, uh, a toll-like receptor. You see in our cartoon here what we're reflecting is the, uh, the police or the security guards calling to action the immune system, right? So our TLRs, when, when tissue is damaged, which is the case that we, we see in DMD, or, or foreign pathogens come our way, the TLRs really act as a way to call the immune system to action. So the next question you might ask besides what is a TLR is why do I care? And uh, this schematic here, if I start you in the top middle, you'll see the dystrophin damage, and that's where everyone is, spends most of their time talking about it, thinking about it. That's been the focus, and, and rightfully so. But the cascade here is when the, when the uh, muscle tissue is damaged, it releases DNA and RNA, and those TLRs are called to action to mop up the nucleic acid. And as a result of bringing that immune response, what happens is the cascade, the, the inflammation cascade continues and propagates, continues and propagates. And so our approach is, fr frankly, quite simple. If we intervene in these TLRs, and, and the word we use are antagonists, so essentially in English that means stopping the immune system or slowing it down from doing what it would normally do, can we have a positive effect on the muscle damage? Can we slow it down? And as we think about the populations of boys that we could possibly treat, we, we divide them into two categories as well, slightly different than what we've heard. Is it possible for the youngest boys who have yet to be treated with steroids with a, an approach of an anti-inflammatory anti approach, is it possible to slow the, the onset of the disease? And that might be very meaningful. And the second, for those who have already had to begin steroid treatment, frankly, or whatever the new therapies are that come on board, can, can the use of an anti-inflammatory and, and, and antagonizing these TLRs have a positive impact and slow the progression of the disease? So this is an opportunity where maybe our drug could be used in combination with the other drugs that you're hearing about here today and other drugs that will come down the pike as a complement to, uh, to help provide a better quality of life and maybe a better outcome altogether. So that's the theory that we're working with at IDERA. 
Let me begin by telling you that our drug is, is uh, it's a little less sexy than uh, Dr. Binks's drug. Of, uh, it's called IMO 8400. We do have a name. We can't reveal it yet, uh, but we will soon. So IMO 8400, if, if you, and I know many of you probably have never heard of IDARA until today, so uh, when you look and learn more about us, you'll see that IMO 8400 has been, has been in clinical studies. It is in clinical studies for different diseases. Uh, we have uh, clinical data in, an, in, a, in a large autoimmune disease that really gives us the basis for belief that inhibiting TLRs or antagonizing TLRs can have a clinical benefit. And we're currently also studying this compound in B-cell lymphomas. So we have a large database, frankly, of safety and patients treated with this drug and other conditions, which allows us, frankly, to be, to be able to move into clinical studies in DMD. So that really sets the stage. In addition to the clinical work we've, we've done and are doing with the compound, specifically in DMD, we've done a number of preclinical studies. We've worked with Dr. Najaraju uh, for the past several years. So we've, we've, even though you may not know us well, we've been, we've been in the space working behind the scenes, and we look forward to uh, moving front and center with the rest of you as we move forward here. But the study that we're planning right now is, is, uh, is a study of looking at... Uh, Young ambulatory boys not on corticosteroids. And really, because we don't have a good feel for what the dose should be, this will be our first entry into pediatrics. The plan is to do a, a, a co three cohorts, dose ranging up, total of 24 weeks per cohort. Uh, the, the endpoints, we're going to take advantage of some of this guidance and work with uh, MRI as a biomarker, as well as looking at uh, some, some clinical outcomes as well. Where we stand in the process, frankly, is that we're, we're working with the experts and the FDA to design the study, and our target right now is to get this study up and running in early 2016. And our goal would be to be back here, to be invited back here with a purpose next year to share with you how we're making progress in this study. I want to close by giving you a little bit more color on our company. You can see we're, we're a really large company. We have all of our employees in the foyer. Uh, <laughs> But please don't measure the heart or passion that we have by the limited number of employees we have. That would be a mistake. It would be, be a terrible mistake to, to, to not look at us and, and count us worthy of your time and effort because we, we have a lot of passion for what we do. Uh, again, you, you are inspirations to us every day. And, and again, I want to close and say thank you for that. And I look forward to having an opportunity to be back here for the second year and telling you how we're doing to help your boys. Thank you very much.